All right, the cat is dangerously close to the phone. So if the phone goes, it was the cat. You can see him right here in the corner. His ear. I'm trying to get him to come over here. So it's cool and it was cloudy. And we, we saw two blue jays and a couple of squirrels before we even got out of the car. So, uh, and then the woodpecker decided to pose. I'm hoping that I got a couple of really incredible shots and a whole bunch of good ones. And then a whole bunch of, you know, just photos that I'm going to have to trash because they're tails, squirrel tails. All right. Uh, normally, I attempt to gender neutral things. I don't know that I can do this because this is a poem. So I'm going to read it as written by our author, who is, no, do not mark the phone. Um, Hannah Moore co-house uh, which was and it was published in the uh, unity song selections so i'm guessing it's either a poem or a song so i'm going to read it as is and then decide the title of it is our father never faileth all right our father never faileth to give his children bread they need only to hunger more richly to be fed for love is a Love's abundant table more graciously surprise, supplies each earnest aspiration that hourly doth rise. Our Father never faileth to give his offspring strength. They need but lean to measure its height and breadth and length. Lo, I am with you always. This is the promise true to know no shade or turning beloved meant for you. Our Father God the only is round and in us all, sustaining and embracing that none need ever fall. He's light and joy and healing. O oh, come and taste and see. Our Father faileth never throughout eternity. Okay, so like I said, that is Hannah Moore Cohouse, published in Unity Song Selections from 1947. Hem 118. Um, and then it says something about ta uh, tune the church's one foundation. Now, so let's deal with the, I, I try and gender neutral things. And the reason I try and gender neutral things is because we all have interesting relationships with our parental figures. Um, so some so in in that way I'm attempting to make the reading more accessible to everybody. Um uh, and then occasionally you just have to read it the way it's written and then go from there. So um uh, and I don't know the song The Church is One Foundation, which is why I read it like a poem. Um uh, well that and nobody wants to hear me sing. So uh but it's it, what it reminded me of is I when you go back and look, that there's a there's a whole lot of songs that were actually taken from Bible quotes. Uh, the most famous example that I can think of is "Morning Has Broken" from uh, Cat Stevens, who that's from the Book of Genesis. Uh, and then um, and I can't remember who it is. The birds, maybe. Um, turn, turn, turn. That's also from the Bible. So there's there's actually a number, and so. There are, it's, it's another way of getting the information out and people, and people are like bl blissfully oblivious. Oh, so it's like, you've heard a whole lot more of the Bible than you think you have because it's coming from different sources. Um, and I want to point out to you that in this, no, I do not want you back up on that table. Why don't you go behind me? Thank you. <laughs> the cat not, oh, you're just. Well, at least he hasn't knocked the phone off yet. He just knocked it out of focus. Um, our, our, okay, so our, our God never fails to give the children, the children bread. They only need to hunger more richly to be fed. Okay. To hunger more richly, does that mean that we should ask for more than we've been willing to ask for at this point? do we do we not ask for 
as much as we could because we're afraid that God won't answer. Okay. For love's abundant table most graciously supplies to each earnest aspiration that hourly doth arise. So I think she's reminding us, look, when you ask earnestly, earnest, uh, earnest, then God is going to answer and God is going to answer as much as you ask. So why not ask more? Ask more richly. Our God never fails to give the offspring strength they need but lean to measure its height, breadth, and length. What? <laughs> but then this quote, lo, I am with you always, This, which is a Bible quote. Uh, this is the promise true that knows no shade or turning, beloved, meant for you. So all of the strength that you need you have available to you if you are willing to lean in. Lean in. Lo, I'm with you always. <laughs> I mean, I, I like that she says this, this, the promise, this is the promise true. Um, and then she, that last one is, you know, our spirit, God, the only is round and in us all. That is a promise again. It is the truth that we understand. It's like, you know, God is everywhere, including in us. There's nowhere God is not. Um, sustaining and embracing that none need ever fall. God is light and joy and healing. Oh, come and taste and see. Our God never fails throughout eternity. Okay, so. It's simple and yet to the point. Ask for more. You're not, you, you deserve more than, you're, than you've been willing to ask for up to this point. Ask for more. As long as it is an earnest aspiration, it will be answered. Will it be answered the way you expect? Probably not. But God has unlimited ways of bringing us what we are asking for. So, um... All of the strength that we need to do, whatever it is that we need to do, if we are willing to lean in, will be granted. But it's that willingness to lean in, to trust in that strength. Because God is always there. God is always there. And then she says it in the next, in the, in the, in the final paragraph. In is, or is round and in us all. There's nowhere God is not. So no matter what happens, you won't truly fall because God will always be there to catch you. And then she says what God is, light, heat, joy, and healing. Come, taste, and see. And there is no time or space in God. All right. So now we have, it, 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 we're almost through our first month. One more. We've got one more. Tomorrow is the last day of April. And tomorrow is a poem because this woman I know, I know Ella, Ella Wheeler Wilcox. I have one of her books. In fact, I posted a poem and a friend of mine said, hey, you sound like Ella Wheeler, uh, Ella Wheeler Wilcox. And I went, who? <laughs> so, um, yep, there we go. So if you wanted to, you could go back and change the father to mother or spirit or whatever. Um, I, it was just one of those that, you know what? I don't think I could do it on the fly. So it was just, I'm going to read it as is. Now, what the mission today should we choose to ask for? Should we choose to, the mission today, should we choose to accept it is to ask more rich. To, I, she, her words were to hunger more richly knowing that earnest aspirations are going to be fed to hunger more richly, which is probably, you know, right now, cause my stomach is about to growl. So I'm just like, mm, okay, <laughs> I need to, I need to wrap this up cause my stomach is growling and I need to go get breakfast. So the mission today is to, to hunger more richly 
knowing that earnest aspirations will be fed. Uh, and then I would also, as I always do, encourage you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Uh, today is my day where I literally have nothing to do. Uh, there's stuff that I could do, but I, there's nothing I have to do. And so I'm going to take this day and to snuggle with my fur babies and take a break. And then, you know, next week we'll go back to being, because work is about to get really interesting. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to take my rest while I can. Um, and so that honestly, you know, spiritual prim principle of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself is it looks like taking the day off. It looks like taking the day off and um, doing what you want to do and letting the have tos sit. I want to remind you we're human beings, not human doings. So the, the first time I heard Dr. D Dr. Kosami say, say that, I was like, what? What? Oh, you are allowed time to just be. And sometimes that is the most loving, kind, and compassionate thing you can do for yourself. I, I don't, I'm not even trying to hide the fact that what I'm talking about, the, this, the spiritual principle of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself is absolutely about self-care. If you are going to live a life of service, you must take care of yourself first. It's like being on an airplane. The oxygen mas masks drop, you put yours on, then you help your neighbor. All right? It's the way it goes. You can't pour from an empty cup. So take care of yourself. And it looks like taking a deep breath before you speak. And it looks like taking a nap. And it looks like taking a walk and all of that. Um, it is about self-care. I also want to remind you, because one of the things that she said in, in her, that Hannah said was that God is light and joy and healing. Well, make room for joy. You absolutely deserve joy, no matter what is going on in your life. You deserve joy. But it is, to a degree, up to you to make room for it. So make room for joy. Uh, and what I say with that is, it, uh, eat dessert first. Eat dessert first. So, um, and I realized that it was a metaphor. I know you can't see the shirt that I'm wearing today. It's, there's a, kind of a kitty wizard. Well, you can't see it now because I showed it to you. And we saw Cardinal in the park and it was after Ruth passed. And that's whose shirt this is that I realized that when I was saying to eat dessert first, what I was saying was don't say the good, don't save the good stuff. You know, we may only pass this way once. Our life is a special occasion. Make room for joy. Wear the nice clothes eat the good food, wear the fun shirts, do the fun stuff, or simply rest. Okay. I encourage you to practice on yourself for the, for about three really good reasons. One, you are your own best test subject. You get immediate feedback. Is this loving? Is this kind? Is this compassionate? Two, um, I'm encouraging you to create a habit a first response so that no matter what is going on in your life, you can respond lovingly, kindly, and compassionately. And then the third reason is, is because you are a beloved child of God. You deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. All right. I, one of the things that struck me about that first stanza is to more richly hunger. Sometimes we don't ask for much because we don't think we deserve much. And the truth is we're beloved children of God. We deserve it all. Now, what does that mean? Everybody's different. But it means you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be cared for. You deserve kindness. You deserve compassion. So, as she says, more richly hunger. Hunger for love, kindness, compassion. And you can't go wrong. And you can't go wrong. All right. I'm going to move forward into my day, um, which means I'm going to go get something to eat because I'm starving, but I'm going to remind you also to do something to engage your mind and your body. I have something in my eye. I'm sorry. Um, do something to engage your mind and your body. 
Drink plenty of water. Hydration is important. Your brain works better when it is well hydrated. And to get early in your day bright light. Uh, I, I always encourage like early in the day sunlight because it resets um, your hormone balance. It's called a circadian rhythm. And if there is no sun, because there's not today, <laughs> that storm rolled through last night, artificial light does help. So early in your day, bright light will help to you to have more energy and during the day and you'll sleep better at night. And science, you can look it up. I mean, we're science in mind. Why wouldn't I lean into the science? And then as always, I'm going to remind you with that, my, my quote, my favorite quote from Ernest Holmes, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. As Hannah said in her thing, our God is round and in us all. And when we look around and we see that everything is sacred, we'll move through the world differently. We will make different choices. We'll sp ideally speak more kindly to each other and treat the earth more gently. And yeah. So, oh, you can always take him as advice. Look for the good and praise it. All right. So. Here's where I will remind you the social media part. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I do encourage you to check them out. Uh, I have been neglecting the other social medias in favor of the YouTube right now, uh, but I am almost caught up. I am into March, so which is funny because we're almost finished with April, but I'm really close to getting to really close to getting caught up. So. Uh, that yeah hyper focus is a thing and then hopefully i'll go back to being able to focus a little bit more on the rest of the social medias and we'll go from there so uh please <laughs> avail yourself of them and if you want to know what's going on with the center email info at creativelife.org there are at least three book studies going on there is the Philosophy Fridays, which right now is, has nothing to do with a book, but was I, I got to join it last week, this yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. And it was very interesting. So that was that was good. Um, and I'm just, yeah, there's just a whole lot going in, going on. So email info at creativelife.org. They're hot. The hot links in that constant contact email are hot. If it says click here now, it'll take you either right to the person that will get you the information or right to the information you're wanting. All right. Um, stepping forward into, yeah. Just let me get my hand back from the cat because apparently I need two hands to do this. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to have a great day, a wonderful day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonder-filled day, an awesome day, a catter day, a take a break day, a get stuff done day, a take a nap day, a uh, enjoy the cool day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. As I've said before, and we'll say again, because it is the truth of your being, you are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark, a brilliant light. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. You are a godling. Know the truth of your being. Know the truth of your being. All right. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. And we'll have an amazing service for you because today is Saturday, um, which makes tomorrow Sunday, unless you're watching this on YouTube and who knows what day of the week it is. But whatever else you know today, please know that you are loved Take care of yourself and I will see you next time.